to touch upon my favorite topic that I like to kind of, you know, rant and ramble about, Bergheim. So Bergheim have just released their November um, lineup of things that are happening at the club. And the first thing that came to mind, just from a fan's point of view, is that is it me or are the lineups a lot more, I wouldn't say underwhelming, but they're very, they're sort of, um, they're not very glitzy, are they, anymore? And I wonder why that is, like in terms of big names, in terms of like a variety of names. There's a, there's a variety of names, don't get me wrong, but they're kind of the same type of people you're kind of seeing again and again and again. So clearly it feels like there's been a change in direction in what they're trying to do. That's what it feels like a little bit, maybe in the booking process. Or maybe is it the fact that in a post-pandemic post world, some people have just quit DJing, some people have moved into other you know areas of the industry, um, maybe some people don't have the means to come, you know, and visit or come to play in places like Berlin or travel in general. Maybe some have changed how they do, you know, approach their DJing in general. Maybe said, you know what, I'm just going to do local gigs. If I can't drive, I'm not going to go. Maybe it's that sort of vibe. Um, or maybe it's just this is a, this is kind of the natural evolution of, of clubs like this. Like you just kind of have to keep reinventing yourself. And how they're basically reinventing yourself in this regard is that you see obviously the residents there playing all the time, but you see a lot of sort of like family and friends that you'd kind of maybe associate with Berka and also playing um, considerable in these lineups. But, you know... Th the times when I, you know, randomly went to Berghain and saw fucking DJ Harvey playing, it feels like that's long gone. Do you know what I mean? The, I think the closest I saw to that was maybe recently, maybe a couple of years ago, maybe it was 2020. I remember there was a lineup where Solomon was playing in Berghain randomly. No, I think it was maybe Panorama Bar, actually. It wasn't Berghain, it was Panorama Bar, yeah. Solomon played there in 2020, I think, or 2021. So that's the last time I've seen like a quote-unquote big name that you would describe or you know someone you maybe see on dj mag or mix mag and shit who's gonna definitely sell a lot of tickets or who's gonna you know may, maybe bring a big crowd down to the place and i'm not sure what is the right thing because i think overall if you've if you've gone to Berkheim, uh post pandemic or post lockdown sorry you would have definitely recognized that it's not as full as it once was ever and there are some nights where it does get really busy especially there are some periods of the nights where it does get really really rammed but how it was prior where it was just like a constant heaving throbbing group of people just coming in and out in and out it's not like that at all anymore it's definitely way more um sparse you you know it's for the first time in a long time i remember i mentioned this beforehand but when i used to go prior i never even knew what the dj booth looked like most of the time because i was flipping off my head and whatnot but because it was so rammed you didn't even get a chance to go through to the front so i was just near the especially the burger on the floor I was always kind of dancing on the platforms or standing towards next to the speakers on the right hand side and stuff around the back but I never got a chance to go near the front and one time when I went just before the pandemic I remember just being like wow man like I actually got to see what the booth looks like because I, I got to see right through it from the back I got to see straight through up to the front of the booth and I was like shit I've never actually seen what the booth actually looks like like not even you know inside just for the front and that was basically a big sign that maybe the kind of the amount of people that go have basically decreased and that obviously is my ongoing theory that most of it has to do with the fact that you know general punters have basically moved on and i guess we all took that we all took them for granted whether you're a promoter whether you're an event booker you took that kind of customer who just you know um on a whim decides to go to a nightclub because they basically add to the overall numbers you know you got the club kids you got the djs you got the scenesters and stuff but then you need the general punter person to just kind of fill out places and kind of get you ticking over sell out a couple of your dates blah -de blah 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 and that obviously hasn't happened so i wonder if this is a reaction to this and Berghain like you know what because we don't have general punters coming in there's no need to book all these kind of like general dj mag mix mag type djs let's just book people that we actually want to see play like interesting people um maybe lineups that probably wouldn't sell um you know traditionally well maybe pre-pandemic in like 2018 or 2017 to 2019 and let's kind of go for it and actually try and change things because that's why i think they've done really well quietly you know, there's a whole conversation uh, prior to the lockdown about there not being a lot of rep female representation, not a lot of black and brown people playing in certain parties, certain raves, not a lot of maybe queer people, LGBTQ plus people. And I feel like Burkhan in, as general, as a sort of like leading force in dance music, especially in club culture, have just done it very quietly by just, you know, changing the lineups and just having them be, you know, loads of more, loads of label type takeovers. 
or collective takeovers, loads of just loads of just different people that you wouldn't necessarily see having a chance to play at a place like Berghain. Um, one being obviously Lily Ackerman, uh, big up her having a chance to play there. That's absolutely amazing. And loads of other people also that are getting a chance to play there. So it's pretty decent to see that way. But I am, it just, it was kind of, curious to me when I saw lineup I was like huh it is it's both underwhelming and also quite inspiring that this lineups exist in a place like this because it clearly means that there's somebody that works there or is associated with that's got the that's got their finger on a pulse that's kind of plugged in or that's got somebody that kind of does that for them because they always seem to kind of book the the right people the right mix um right representation all that sort of stuff it kind of gets tick 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 ticked so clearly there's something going on there that's really good and one of the nights I was kind of looking at thinking you know what I could do a little quick weekender and just quickly nip over there and nip back again was this weekend this one here this is what i was looking at so it's the friday the 11th friday the 18th of november um and then that'll probably end up me leaving on the friday and then coming back on the following monday but that's the kind of thing that i'm kind of looking at to kind of check out and obviously if i do end up going i'm definitely going to make sure i check out flipping rso um i still haven't blood bloody gone i think i'm mentioning it to somebody else one of the annoying things about going to this place is that because it's always got such a great you know expansive list of people that are playing it's really difficult to kind of go somewhere else you kind of get stuck there and you just want to enjoy your party there and not go to another venue especially because the other venues are usually all over the city because unlike london they don't have clubs just in one area because i feel like for us if whatever reason we have clubs in just like what they're kind of clustered they're all, all in east in one area all in south one area da, 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 da. but i guess because they have such great you know relationships with the local council and shit and they're allowed to open super late it, there's no need to have a club in a certain area you can just have it anywhere and it's still going to close at 6 a.m anyway or whatever it's going to close at 8 a.m it doesn't really matter so that kind of is a good thing but obviously for a punter like myself who's kind of you know i kind of get stuck um i kind of get par par what was it paralysis of analysis oh yeah analysis paralysis where you're just overthinking where you should go and then you don't make a decision and you just end up just staying in Berkham the whole time and then you end up complaining about it making a video about it <laughs> so i'm gonna mix up if i do end up going and probably end up going to some different places like i said rso is the one place to go and of course same head is also a different place to go to but these lineups on the Friday the 18th is really nice too. You've got Finest Fridays, you've got um, uh, Stack, Shka, Shka, Shka track. Alin Ka, Itella Johnson, and Mary Moxamia, who I actually saw play at Fabric for the first, first time in real life. And she was really good. And then I saw her play again. Where was it? Oh, shite. I forgot where it was again in London, but I've seen that a couple of times and I've always been impressed. And of course, I tell her Johnson, I've got a ton of their tracks on my USBs that I play out when I did DJ a lot. And I'm a big fan of their production, so I'm sure they'll be decent DJs, but I've never actually seen them play before. So that's obviously really cool. And obviously, Alinka is really amazing too for the see people upload on online. She's always playing some really cool disco y type. Um, you know i tell a vibe type stuff so that's probably something i'm gonna end up checking out as well and then the a the 19th date is a big one this is a big one this is because you got a little bit you got a couple of uh malahunta um djs here representing you know d, d dan dj tall hyper activists and shit so that's going to be a pretty decent one that list is an absolute meaty one and i'd imagine that might end up being the most busiest weekend of the absolute of november in the first place Berghain, you got ben clock d dan dj tall et up kyle hyped activist norman nodge jesus and then the panorama bar you got kink aka ozo Jenny on Earth, Lakuti, Massimiliano Pellegrini, Pellegrini, sorry, Nicola Cruz, uh, Paramida, and Sedef Adasi. That's going to be an absolute barnstorm of a night. So I'm probably going to end up booking it anyway. And um, now I'm kind of look reading over it. I'm kind of, you know, getting excited. I've got a little chub going on. So I'm definitely going to end up doing this and making it work. But yeah pretty decent lineups um yeah both underwhelming and also inspiring because for someone like myself who eventually wants to end up playing there it's nice to see that they've got people playing there who are not the biggest baitest names but who are going to bring the absolute carnage when they end up playing so that's really cool to see and then i guess the following weeks what have you got uh, anything else that stop stands out there of course nick hobner will be absolutely amazing to see in panorama bar on the following weekend you've got boris dvs1 or Bo i've never actually seen boris play 
No, I did actually, didn't I? I did. What, what am I lying about? I did. I saw him play when I went on July for the Club Sylvester when they kind of did, did the made up Club Sylvester to make up for the one that they didn't do in January, December, January of last year. And I went to one in June, July this year. So I see, I saw him play, but I want to see actually him in his actual element from start to finish. I think I only caught the, the end of it or something. Um, so that's pretty decent. And the power brand really got Chris Cruz, someone I'm a big fan of. Eris Dio, I'm a big fan of also. Middle, I'm a big fan of. And of course, Roy Perez, I'm a big fan of, especially after seeing him that first time with Dr. Rubenstein back in the day at Mixed Garage. You know, I've kind of been in love with his sets and how he plays for a long time since then. So that should be decent as well. But yeah, that 18th and 19th weekend is looking at something that I might have to end up checking out just for the sake of it. Why bloody not? Why bloody not? And then moving on, I want to quickly touch upon this. This is a topic someone posted in the actual Berlin community subreddit, which I do recommend if you're not a member already, please do check it out. If you have any questions about Berlin stuff and you want to, you know, get kind of some help about outfits and about where to go and all that sort of malarkey, I definitely recommend that you should check out the Berlin um Berlin community subreddit. It's definitely one of the better ones in my opinion, right? And it's this one here. I'm going to get this up on the screen, just going to read my username. But yeah, that's basically it, right? That one there. And obviously the question here um, regarding, which I kind of found was really interesting, was like this, controversial opinion. Bergheim is not worth a three to six hour wait. Um, and the text follows, it says, if you wait in a queue for this and don't get rejected, you can guarantee you are wasting, um, sorry, you are waiting long also on toilets and drinks. Um, and the dance floor will be packed by 8 p.m. And the mood will reflect this. Bergheim is best when it's way more chill. Nah, I disagree. I've had times there, like I said, that time I went to see DJ Harvey play in the main floor at Berghain, the dance floor, I've never seen it more full. It was legitimately insanely full. I, I literally saw but DJ Harvey's hands and head come up at the end and he kind of clapped the crowd. But I, apart from that, it was just rammed. He couldn't even move. And it was amazing. One of the best nights I've ever had in my life. So the idea that it's only good when it's chill is really ridiculous. Maybe if you're a local, or sorry, if you're a regular and you actually live there, maybe it's different because you don't, you don't actually like the crowd and it being full of tourists but for myself i love it but in general just this idea about waiting i may be a bit biased in this because obviously um i grew up being a sneakerhead i grew up you know collecting and buying you know rare streetwear bits and bobs and whatnot and that whole entire subculture basically was built on queuing right you always had to queue for things even if there weren't that many people buying it there were maybe only 500 of you in the flipping country that liked that kind of stuff you ended up having to queue because there was never enough flipping supply to satisfy demand so just kind of what it was and i guess because of that it kind of taught me a very valuable thing right to be patient to be patient and to also understand like sometimes the things that you really want you kind of have to maybe queue up for them so i've never really had a problem queuing up for things i think there are things clearly that you maybe shouldn't waste your time queuing but i think in general this kind of idea that you're wasting your time queuing considering how much time we all waste on our phone we always talking to people we always browsing around we always just doing absolute nonsense because you have to stand dead you have to stand in a dedicated spot or in a dedicated area for a prolonged period of time with no real guarantee that what you're doing is going to lead to the you know a beneficial outcome i feel like sometimes i think you know it kind of is proof of how um indulge we are in society in general and how lacking we are in the ability to just kind of sit still and just wait for your turn and um, whether or not you get in and out and the thing is really confusing about that post especially when it comes to Berghain it's in Berlin right if this was if that club was in any other country in the world it would make more sense why people would be really pissed off about having to wait so long but Berghain legitimately even if you walk 10 minutes away from the club, there's a literal nightclub you can go to. Maybe not the best, and maybe it doesn't, you know, hold a candle to Bergheim, but there's literally, uh, you know, hundreds of options within five miles of that club that you can get to easily. There's a taxi rank right outside. You can jump into a taxi and maybe just ask the driver. Even if you're lucky, you can ask the driver if he speaks English. Hey, where's the nearest club I can go to that you would recommend? He'll take you there, drop you. Like, it, there's many of options. So this idea that you're wasting your time isn't necessarily true because you can go to a different club straight away anytime of the day that you're actually in that queue um with the exception of maybe i don't know a monday morning but basically any time that you leave that queue you can basically go to another nightclub which you can't do in any other city because if you do go somewhere else that place might be closed and hasn't really opened yet blah 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 but that always happens as well and the other thing also that i think is good is that we're all going through the same thing it's not as if you don't have to wait in the queue when you're on the guest list your only people who get bumped to the front are maybe actual 
regulars who are you know legitimately tied to the club and with like friends and family or friends of, of the or the actual dj themselves but everybody has to wait in the queue at some point you might not you know maybe just guess this queue is shorter than the normal queue but you still have to wait in the queue and i think that's um kind of comforting for the most part because you're all kind of in this together and you also under the you also under the premise or the idea that most likely inside you're going to have a really great time so maybe it's worth queuing that time but i think in general you just have to decide for yourself because i'm a i'm a big believer in like you always make time for the things that you actually want to do so this idea that i don't have time to do this, I don't have time to do that it's always a bit of a misnomer for me because if you really wanted to do it you would make the time you would carve out the time you'd wake up earlier you stay up later whatever it would do whatever would need it to be done in order to get that in order to enjoy the thing that you want to do you would always do it so this idea that queuing is not worth it it means maybe the subtext of it is like maybe you're not really into it anymore it's maybe your subconscious telling you hey go and grab pick up a guitar go and read a book go travel go start bouldering or something maybe that's your subconscious talking to you that hey this is not for you anymore but i don't think it's a waste of time at all in my opinion i think we waste you know i know myself i waste enough time on my phone i waste enough time on social media i waste enough time not doing the things i should be doing i know you know through various periods of my life when i did sit down you know a good example being flipping college or school and stuff the moment you know i was a pretty bad student but i was always really smart and in the moment i got really bad results and i had to actually revise because i was worried i wasn't going to get into college if i had those bad results i took with a test exam i actually spent like a couple of months actually revising it was frightening how much i was able to flip and improve i went from having like you know test scores of like e's and f's to suddenly sitting in the real exams and having like a's and b's just from two weeks of actually focusing and revising for real and the first thing that came to mind when i got the results was like bloody yo imagine where i would have been if i just would have focused the whole entire year like that right but i was wasting my time doing other things wasting my time doing everything but revising so we all waste our time in certain ways so if you come to adulthood and you finally get to a point where you're, you know, you're into clubs and stuff and you stumble across Burkhine and they tell you, hey, you might have to wait six hours to get into this amazing, you know, mind melding, um, life altering nightclub. It might be worth the six hour wait just to see what it's going to be like in, in the inside, just for the possibility. Like I say before, I'm a big fan of actually seeing and feeling and touching things for myself. I want to see it for myself. So having the ability or have, knowing deep down that maybe if I wait, I might have the opportunity to see that for myself is something that I would never turn down, not in the slightest. So it's definitely worth it for me. But if other people, I understand why it would not be worth it. And also, again, like I said, I'm not the best person to talk about it because I come from a scene where I was always queuing for stuff, trainers, clothes, hoodies, jackets, whatever, right? All the time. Um, and also I'm somebody who at the boom i don't know if you guys had the same thing but we had this like you know there was a period in time where flipping food trucks were all over the place and people were bringing over their recipes of having to cook the perfect cheeseburger and this place called uh, meat liquor had their food truck when it first started and me and my friend used to flipping follow that food truck all around london it'd be parked up outside of flipping you know pubs and stuff parked in pub gardens um at flipping food shows at market things and they'd kind of announce it on their twitter i think or on their facebook and you have to go there really early and guess what queue you'd have to queue for the privilege of buying a burger and sometimes it got so bad it wouldn't let you buy more than one you had to buy one only one per person burger like you're copying a fucking box logo hoodie it was absolutely ridiculous and we did that all the time we had a whale of time we got to eat this really nice burger you know with this great meat patty and that was cooked a certain way from this person that clearly had a big passion for it we got to meet other people in the community of cheese burger eating who fucking loved it it was all good i never you know i didn't think that was a waste of time i didn't regret that in the slightest so you know um queuing is what you make it you know it's worth it to you if it's worth it to you really that's the long and short of it that's the long and short of it